Hello and welcome to the wonderful journey that is getting to know the protein glucose oxidase. Today we are going to learn some general knowledge, some chemical reactions, some structure, and some applications about this wonderful enzyme and how it helps us in our daily life. At the end of this journey you will have achieved the ultimate goal of every scientist. Knowledge! Okay, here we go! Glucose oxidase has been mainly isolated from fungi, specifically the genus Aspergillus and Penicillin. It turns beta-glucose into gluconic acid and makes hydrogen peroxide as a byproduct. This is because it uses oxygen as an electron acceptor. Usually when we are talking about using oxygen as an electron acceptor, we are talking about the electron transport chain and metabolism and all of that jazz. But that's not what's happening here. In fact, the point of the enzyme is not the reaction with glucose, but the creation of hydrogen peroxide, which scientists think is used as a biological defense against bacteria. This is evidenced by the fact that it is found on the surface of fungi and in honey, both places where we don't want those nasty, nasty bacteria to ever be. It's time for a meme break. Get ready! Now that we learned about the general knowledge, let's get into the specifics and learn about the specific chemical reaction that happens in our enzyme to make all of this possible. Let's go! The reaction comes in two phases, the first being the oxidation of glucose to gluconic acid, and the enzyme catalyzes the oxidation of beta-glucose to degluconobalactone, which is non-enzymatically reduced to gluconic acid. But when something gets oxidized, something always has to get reduced, and that's why we have, yes, our good old friend FAD comes into the mix, because it's covalently attached to our enzyme, and that's what gets reduced. In the second phase, the glucose oxidase gets reoxidized back, and FADH2 gets turned into FAD plus again, and in the process, oxygen, our electron acceptor, gets reduced to hydrogen peroxide. Fun fact, because our glucose oxidase contains an FAD, which is a derivative of riboflavin, our enzyme is also known as a flavoprotein. Now let's move on. Now that we've learned about the chemical reaction, let's go into the structure. Woo! -woo! Glucose oxidase is a dimeric glycoprotein, with the sugars covalently attached mainly consisting of mannose and sucrose. The protein consists of alpha helices and a couple beta turns. What's cool about this enzyme is that it's consisted of identical dimeric subunits, each one having their own FAD cofactor. This image shows the line of symmetry which is the green point in the middle. This also means the substrate beta glucose also binds symmetrically as well. The important amino acids for this protein are the conserved active site residues of glucose oxidase, which are tyrosine 73, phenylalanine 418, tryptophan 430, arginine 516, asparagine 518, histidine 520, and histidine 563. Before we talk about those, let's take a look at this image right here. Here we have the FAD present in the protein, and we can see um, its features that identify it as our favorite FAD. It has those uh, the three rings that uh, term for the quinone, which is what is getting oxidized and reduced. Yes, right there. Getting oxidized and reduced in our uh, reaction. And this makes it apparent why glucose has to be set in a perfect way in order to well and efficiently react with our FAD. Now that we have that elucidated, let's move on. Here's an image where the important amino acids are labeled. Arginine 516 is the most important because it binds glucose, but it gets some help from asparagine 518. The aromatic residues tyrosine 73, phenylalanine 418, and tryptophan 430 help orient the glucose correctly so that the glucose oxidation occurs at max speeds. Finally, histidine 520 and histidine 563 form hydrogen bonds with the one alcohol of glucose during the reaction which is part of the specificity that drives the binding of glucose to this wonderful enzyme. Now, let's move on. We learned all about the structure, now let's move on to the applications. Yeah! The enzyme is part of a $5 billion industry. Glucose oxidase is big in the world of diabetes because it is used in glucose sensors. The key is that glucose oxidase turns something that is hard to measure, glucose, into something easy to measure, hydrogen peroxide. 
Now, the more hydrogen peroxide, the bigger the signal of the platinum electrode in the sensor registers. And so by measuring the amount of H2O2 made, you can know the amount of glucose present in the sample. The enzyme has been modified to use other elements as an electron acceptor, allowing for the creation of disposable and cheap one-use sensors as well. The enzyme has also been modified not to have the sugars covalently attached to it because those sugars can contribute to an incorrectly high glucose level. This monitoring of glucose levels can also be translated into the food industry. In raw vegetables and fruit, the levels of glucose can be measured to ensure that the product is not going bad. It can also be used in fermentation processes. Furthermore, glucose oxidase has been used to lower glucose levels in food, like in egg whites and in dough. In egg whites, it's used to keep the egg whites from browning and to keep them fresh for longer, and in the case of dough, it's been used to make the dough stronger. What that means, I don't know. In clinical trials, glucose oxidase has been mixed with glucose and put into a nasal spray, and this could be treatment for the common cold. So far, clinical trials have been held on preschool children and adult participants. While cool, these studies have a long way to go before they hit the shelves, because they haven't been reviewed by the federal government or by any other institutions that need to approve them for safe use. But either way, it's still exciting. Now let's move on. Congratulations, you have reached the end. You have achieved knowledge. Time for your prize.